I was just reading about Joanna Beach. It was named after a ship that wrecked here in the early uh, 19, early 1840s. The ship tried to seek shelter. It came, came in near shore to try and seek shelter from some bad weather. And the captain misjudged it and got the ship caught in the breakers. Uh, so he misjudged it by a bit. And uh, yeah, and then the ship washed ashore. And by the next morning, the wind and the waves had died down a bit. And the survivors from the shipwreck uh, started to make their way to to Cape Otway which is a decent hike from here and some thick vegetation you to get through like it's it's not uh, wouldn't have been an easy walk but when they got to Cape Otway it was actually five years before the lighthouse was built there so yeah there was nothing there they survived for a couple of days there on shellfish and stuff and then they eventually got some Aboriginals to help them trek from there to Geelong which took I think about a week so a decent hike funnily enough when they named the beach and the uh, and the river nearby, they they misspelled Joanna and put a H in it, which um, yeah, it was just because the sailors couldn't spell. <laughs> so I, I love stories like that. Anyway, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> We're at Johanna Beach now. We're just gonna hang out here for a bit, give the kids a bit of a play, a bit of a run around, burn off some energy. It's actually turned out to be a pretty nice day. We had a lot of rain this morning, but the wind we had yesterday is completely gone, which is amazing. It's, it's virtually dead still today. So looks like we might be in for a pretty good day. We're finally getting some solar to top up our batteries. We're getting a little bit low there on, on battery power, so that's good. And yeah, we'll jump back in the car, <clears throat> have some lunch and then jump back in the car and then see where we end up. We'll keep making our way down the coast. So we just pulled up at the Gibson Steps. Um, looks pretty awesome. Uh, I didn't even know it was here. Similar to the 12 Apostles, I suppose. They're like sandstone formations, it looks like, off the coast. There's no sign here or anything to explain what the Gibson Steps actually are. But anyway, looks looks pretty cool. Uh, you sort of can't see that much from the lookout. So I'm gonna do some lazy man sightseeing. Instead of going for a really long walk, I'm gonna fly the drone.
right, so the 12 apostles. Probably one of the most famous landmarks, I suppose, along the Great Ocean Road. It was good, it's impressive, it but I don't know. It's very, very much like the postcard. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's been more impressive parts of the drive, put it that way. It's I not think a it's expectation and reality too. It is. Yeah. Dad, yeah, that's hurt oh. Just saying the boys are running around being silly. If, uh, if we made it back to the car park without one of them hurting themselves, we were going to be doing pretty well. So there's obviously not 12 apostles anymore. There's, I don't know, less than 12 as they gradually erode and fall into the ocean. They reckon it erodes at about two centimetres a year, which I thought it'd be more than that. But anyway, two centimetres a year apparently is what they erode. And even though there's a few fallen down, there's obviously new ones constantly forming as well. We're saying we're going to try and get back here for sunrise to get them in better light to get some good shots but yeah see how we go all right so we got up early this morning not quite as early as we planned the boys had a little bit of a sleep in but that's all right so it's about seven o'clock in the morning we just come back to some of the spots we we're at yesterday gibson steps and we're gonna go to the 12 apostles uh try and get some cool shots with the lighting's good and then um yeah and then we're probably gonna go to lockard gorge which we didn't get to see yesterday and go hang out there for a little bit so We've just rocked up and there, there's a full-on uh, model photo shoot going on. So they obviously knew I was coming. Um, <laughs> I tried to make a joke with them. They didn't seem to think I was very funny. <laughs> Simon rocked up and said, sorry, I'm late. Where do you want me? And they didn't laugh. <laughs> yeah, they just sort of looked at me. <laughs> yeah, good one. Yeah, they just kept talking, <laughs> kept talking to themselves. I thought it was a good joke. But anyway, maybe they just don't appreciate my humour. Well, um, we might get some footage of them getting footage, eh? <laughs> See if that really stirs them up. All right, I'll take you down. I think I've said anyway, anyway, 15 times now. What are you boys having? Cruskets for breakfast? Yeah. Yummo. Yeah. This is our quick breakfast in the car. Quick car breakfast. Peanut butter and cruskets. Yum, yum. And then we'll head back to the, pick up the van, uh, have coffee. I don't know what we're going to do today. Might have a quiet day today. We'll see how we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, famous last words. After we do all this activity this morning, then we'll have a quiet day. Yeah. All right. Onwards and upwards. An awesome morning to be out here. There's hardly anyone around this time of morning. So hot tip, I'd say get up early because uh, you get the place almost to yourself. The light's great. It just looks so much more spectacular than it did this time yesterday afternoon. The kids are a bit cold, so I've left Liz and the kids in the car. I've just come down for a walk to grab a few shots and, and to check it out. And it's just... it's really awesome it's just the colors and everything are just so much better than they were in that sort of harsh afternoon sun compared to this beautiful morning here soft soft light the clouds come over just looks really cool really cool morning so I don't think there'll be too much trimming going on but uh, yeah it's really impressive um, got the kids all rugged up they're gonna have a play in the sand and uh, just chill out here for a little bit while the tides nice and low because uh, I think once the tide comes up later today uh, there won't be much beach left <laughs> comes to uh, kids 
beach toys for shovels and things like that. Bunnings uh, garden tools. Get the plastic garden tools, a couple of bucks each. Way stronger, lasts way longer than any of that cheap plastic crap you buy. Get on to it. Lockhart Gorge, that was pretty awesome. Uh, it's absolutely freezing here this morning. We tried to keep the kids as rugged up as we could. They've had a ball playing in the sand for about half an hour. And we're gonna head back up, go to the van, have coffee, have breakfast, pack up, have some showers, and see where we end up. This <laughs> Not, 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 not happy about having to leave. <laughs> you. All right, so we are at London Bridge. So we've just headed a little bit west of uh, Port Campbell. So we stayed in Port Campbell last night at the Recreation Reserve. Really nice little spot. Um, just big open grassy areas. Uh, great for camping, caravans, anything like that. I'm pretty sure it was 15 bucks a night for adults and five bucks for kids between three and 16. So yeah, that was a pretty good little spot. Port Campbell's a really nice little town. Looks looks like a good spot to spend a little bit of time. So now we've come out to, as I said, we've come out to London Bridge, as they call it, which is just another awesome, impressive part of the coastline. It's just, it's a stunning and incredible coastline and it's very easy to get scenery overload. You gotta sort of, each place you go to and you stop at, you've got to kind of just appreciate it for what it is while you're there. Because, yeah, it's very easy just to go, oh, another set of incredible cliffs, another amazing remote beach. It sounds ridiculous, but when you're here, you sort of, yeah, you've got to just stop and appreciate each place for its individuality. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just an incredible, awesome place. What do you reckon, Harrison? You love it? Yeah? Should we go get some lunch? Mm. Yeah, lunch time. Kids are, kids are having a bit of a bit of a rut, bit of a glut, mm. aren't you? I am too, actually, I'm starving. So we eat a lot of wraps for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is our main go-to for lunch, wraps. Now obviously, we, we love wraps, I mean, they're great. They're, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, look at the kids, they just, look at them, how much they love them, they just, don't even put anything on them. As much as we love wraps, because they're easy to transport, they last for ages, um, they don't squash easily or anything like that, we're looking for a bit of variety. <laughs> so if we're looking for your hot tips on uh, on good traveling lunches. I mean, obviously we can make most things in the van, uh, but things that are quick and easy to knock up while we're on the road. What are your go-to lunch ideas for traveling on the road? Put it in the comments below. Make it happen. Save me from wraps. <laughs> So we've been absolutely blown away by the uh, by the Great Ocean Road. Hopefully we've been able to, with our rookie videoing skills, <laughs> demonstrate a bit of that for you guys as well, and it's impressed you. I've got to say, it's, it's one of those places that's really well known, and sometimes those places don't live up to their hype. I'd say for us, the Great Ocean Road has exceeded our expectations. Well and truly beyond. And I think a lot of it is that 
There were so many hidden treasures that we weren't expecting to love and find along the way. And we ended up spending so much time there because it was just beautiful. Like, And the more time you spend there, the more time you get to appreciate it. And whilst we've been filming, we've been looking for the beauty in places. And I think that's made us really stop, slow down and appreciate those beautiful locations. So yeah, heaps of hidden gems. I really liked Hopeton Falls and Mate's Rest. Yeah, I think... Like you're expecting the coastline to be impressive. You expect, mm. you know that that's what the Great Ocean Road's about. But like Liz is saying, it's those hidden gems that just really have put the icing on the cake for us. I mean, those waterfalls in the back country, you've got the European history of places like Cop Cape Otway. Um, and then you've got, you know, the the impressive, like e even the, the limestone formations off the coast and everything, like yeah. not just the 12 apostles and the well-known ones, but some of the lesser known ones. I mean, Lockhart Gorge was just, I never knew that oh. something like that would exist on the Victorian coastline. You know, if you've got the time, slow down, um, enjoy those hidden gems. Don't just stop at the main tourist attractions. Our biggest advice, we didn't do a lot of a planning, pre-planning for this trip. We obviously knew some of the main better known uh, spots to stop yeah. in. Our biggest advice would be use the visitor information centres. There's really good visitor information centres at, at most of the major towns, Torquay, Apollo Bay, Lawn. Um, and the staff are so super friendly. They've got great advice and tips, um, particularly if you're traveling with kids or with a van or if you've got special things you need to keep in mind. We found so many places that we would never have found, about, found out about without it. Hopefully this little series for you has given you some ideas of things to stop and see next time you're down this way. Leave us a comment, reach out if you want any uh, any other tips or advice, any questions you've got for us. Happy to help anyone out who wants to come down and check out this part of the world and we highly recommend it. While there's no international travel and there's a few less people around and it's, uh, it's a great time to get down here and check it out as well because apparently normally it's absolutely packed with backpackers and with international tourists. So Yeah, to the point where they were saying they had road marshals for major crossings and things like that just to stop the traffic. Yeah, yeah, so good time. Get down here 2021, maybe even 2022. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. Follow along as we uh, we head off. In the next episode, we're gonna be heading into South Australia, heading up the coast a little bit further as we head towards Adelaide. We have never seen this part of the country before. Can't wait to show it to you guys oh, and explore it with you. It's gonna be good. Give us a like, a subscribe. It's a fast and free way to support what we're doing and let us know that what we're doing is having an impact and you're getting some value from it. That's why we do what we're doing. Look forward to talking to you then. See you in the next episode.